So I just wasted some of my time watching Rebel Moon Part 2, The Scar Giver. This is taking place right after Part 1, where Korra and the surviving warriors prepare to defend... Veld, their new home, alongside its people against the realm. The warriors face their past, revealing their motivations before the realm's forces arrive to crush the growing rebellion. This is again directed and written by Zack Snyder, starring the likes of Sofia Botello and many more. From my intro, you can clearly tell, like I said, I, I wasted my time. Which sucks to say because like the first Rebel Moon, I, I had my issues. I was like, just release the director's cut. Like, he's already said he's doing it. I don't know why we're doing these PG-13 shorter versions. Just give us what Zack Snyder wanted. Specifically, if you're not going to be putting these movies in theaters. It's a baffling choice. It's a dumb choice. But here we are. And after part one, I just said, nah, I just need the director's cut. Let me, let me just see what Zack Snyder's actual vision is. And I wasn't even planning to watch this, but... Part of me was like intrigued to check it out and I, I wasted my time and it sucks to say that because I think there are so many countless great ideas in here that just are executed in a way that I just sit there and I'm like, I don't give a flying fuck about what is going on here. And I say that as a fan of Zack Snyder, I am pure and pure out with all of his imperfections or not. I love him as a director. I loved what he did with the DC Universe. I love Watchmen. I love 300. The list can go on and on from there. And even when Rebel Moon was announced, and it was the Seven Samurai R-rated version of Star Wars, or at least this more hardcore version of Star Wars, that intrigued me. Like, Zack Snyder doing a sci-fi film like that, based off a Star Wars idea, and then bringing in the great story of Seven Samurai? Okay, you, you have me so intrigued there. And it just doesn't deliver. So this is very much going to be a rant, a ramble, a, a very much a thought piece on Rebel Moon itself. Definitely leave your thoughts down below. Are you excited for part two? Are you not? Did you like the first part? Let me know down below. Hit that like and subscribe button for more. And like every movie review, even though I definitely have a lot more issues with this film than positives, I still want to talk about the pros, which all relay back to technically, this film is stunning. The visual effects, just like part one, are gorgeous, top to bottom, very imaginative and creative and brings me into the world. I'm a sucker for sci-fi. And I have to say that Rebel Moon, again, delivers on that sci-fi nonsense, that visual noise that you like, at least again, in the visual effects department. Every single thing in here looks gorgeous, looks believable, looks great. And the visual effects artist should be given a round of applause on that factor. I said the same thing about the first one, and I'll say the same thing on this one. I really like how this film looks. As well, aesthetically, I think the film is pretty pleasing. It's a Zack Snyder movie. His movies always look great. Whether it's with slow-mo or with not, it's always going to look beautiful. And I honestly will also say this, when it comes down to the visual effects department, and specifically the action, the action is great. I thought the action was fun in the first one, and it did definitely feel like it should have been R-rated, but I will go as far to say, as much as they cut around in the first one, the second part, I can up the ante and say, wow, the action is a lot better. Not just because it has a like pretty much a whole hour of just a battle, which is pretty badass, but in that same factor of watching it, I can just say like, yeah, it should have probably been rated R. When you see someone shoot someone in the head, you expect their head to explode or blood to shoot out. And you don't get that. And But at least it doesn't cut away this time like the first Rebel Moon did. So I'll give it that. The action is a lot better. You get a lot more of it now. But it also has a couple of issues when it comes down to like the Battle of the Five Armies of what Lord of the Rings had is that you have all the setup and then just action. That, that'll be an issue I talk about, but... We'll get to that. Also, I'd like to give a shout out that I really like the gang we have here. Not primarily the characters because they're very surface level, but I like the actors involved here. I think each and every one of them are really good. Sophia Botello specifically, I love her in this role, and I wish she would get more leading stuff in here. Digimon Hansu, I also think, is fantastic. And truly enough, like I was so pissed in the way that they wasted him in part one. Felt like he deserved so much more screen time. And here he gets a lot more, and you finally get to see what Hansu can do in this role. Personally, for me, like, I still wish we got more. And alongside that, I think the rest of the cast is pretty solid, but those are the two that stand out the most to me. Kind of shout out a couple other departments. 
the score is also great, even though it's trying to make me care about something I don't really care about. And I really like the world building of Rebel Moon. I, I just wish there was more to it, but it's all exposition heavy. And that's where we're going to get into my issues with the film. Now, Zack Snyder has toted that there will be a six hour version of both parts basically pieced together. And... I have a lot of thoughts on that. Now, first, I just feel like that's the version sh that should have been released from the start. If you're not going to put this movie in a wide release in theaters, then there is no reason to have a, just a PG-13 version. And very much an insignificant version. Like, if it's not the director's version, why are we doing this? It just seems like a waste of of time for audience members and even fans of Zack Snyder. His other director's cut have come in different styles and ways. When you look at Zack Snyder's Justice League, that was like a very specific reason for getting that director's cut. Batman v Superman, Watchmen, those didn't get like the biggest credits. They just were additions on Blu-rays that just happened to be better versions overall. Well, Moon Knight were like literally toting it up that like this is the Netflix version this one will be the Zack Snyder version. And then at the same time, like if you wanted to make a six hour thing of there, I'm watching Rebel Moon and I'm like, this actually would have been better as like a brand new sci-fi series on Netflix. Cause as much shit as I give some of Netflix's fantasy and sci-fi stuff, when it comes down to movies, they really look great. And Rebel Moon doesn't look or feel like a Netflix movie. And when I say a Netflix movie, you know what I mean. You, you, you know what I mean. It feels definitely like a streaming, but the film feels bigger in its britches and it looks great. And I feel like if you were able to bring that nuance and put it into a series, and then again, further out these characters, further out this world, this could be an interesting new setup for that all. Netflix needs franchises like that since Stranger Things is going to be ending soon, and really much they don't have a lot, honestly. Everyone's looking for that big fantasy sci-fi series to have on their streaming service. Nope, we're, we're getting a movie, and that's what we have to go off of. I wish it was a series now, specifically after watching part two, but if we're just talking about a movie, we should have just gotten Zack Snyder's from the start. But also, I don't even know if it will be better i'm sure it will be to a certain degree but after watching part two i still sit there and as much as part one built up stuff and it didn't make me care it made me more interested maybe the director's cut will fix a lot of my issues because then i'll actually care about what's going on with the characters with the situation but part two tries to remind you of what happened but it just jumps in and then gives heavy exposition scenes to these characters that you, again, don't have any recollection or any care for. And then as it continues to go on and on from there, it just jumps right into the action. And I feel like I was missing either a lot of moments, a lot of dialogue, or specifically, I just found it all to be visual noise and not understanding what was going on. Saying that I don't understand what was going on isn't because I wasn't paying attention. I just genuinely I didn't care. I didn't care. Like the film didn't warrant me to care. And some of that can be built up off the first part, which again, I liked for the like somewhat, but after watching this, it just makes the first part again, insignificant. That's a big thing. Like being a part of Zack Snyder's like filmography, I would say that Rebel Moon is probably the worst thing that he's done so far. His director's cut might change that, honestly, but even then, I, I don't know what can be fixed. Yeah, you can give me more character development. Yeah, you can further out this world more. But I'm very curious to see how that director's cut works. Is the dialogue going to be better? Is some of the world building and the essence of it's going to be better? Or is it going to be bogged down? Because the first hour of this film, I, I, they were just standing around like preparing. Where I felt like we already should have done that in part one. Like... It now, even looking at it more, it doesn't even feel like we needed a part two. It feels like you could have cut some out stuff out of part one and made it like a three hour epic. And again, just very confusing situation and a lot of just overall visual noise. Like that's what this film feels like. And it reminds me a lot of Sucker Punch, which is another film that Zack Snyder also wrote and directed. It's a movie that I like a lot more than other people do, but mostly in terms of the visuals. Like if I muted that and had it playing on a TV and you're watching, you're like, this, this is a gorgeous movie. But the story itself is not great. And I feel like Rebel Moon kind of has that same issue as well, is that visually it's pleasing and visually you can enjoy it, but... When you try to even give a shit or even care, you can't. It's been a while since we've gotten a big fantasy sci-fi blockbuster like that where you watch it and you're like, 
everything looks awesome, but man, I don't care. I think the last one that I honestly saw in theaters that kind of gave me that same feeling was Mortal Engines. But you guys remember that one Peter Jackson produced film? Cool concept, great visual look but I didn't care at all what was going on in there. My rant just continues from there. Like Rebel Moon just has so many frustrating ideas that should be executed better. I really like the world building as mentioned. I like the characters and the actors in here, but they're all so surface level. Specifically like General Titus, there's so much more to his character that I was just fascinated with. And don't even get me started in the way that they try to hint towards a third film. I, I really hope Zack Snyder just goes away from this whole Rebel Moon idea after his director's cut and they just deliver us something unique, maybe even smaller than that. I say this all, again, as a fan of Zack Snyder. Rebel Moon Part 2, the Netflix cut, whatever the fuck you want to call it, is not a good movie. It's not. And it makes Part 1 a movie that I liked and gave a positive rating to also not like now. Because everything built up in Part 1, I felt, did not satisfy me with Part 2. And now it makes you look back, and a sequel makes the first one worse. All I can hope at this point is that Zack Snyder's next director's cut version of this is 10 times better. I will watch it. Maybe I'll even cover it because now I'm just in the rebel moon phase and I got to talk about it. And I wasn't even planning on reviewing this one until I watched it. And I felt literally dissatisfied, frustrated, and honestly a little pissed off that I wasted my time again. So to tie it all up, this is a frustrating experience. Clearly a vision is laid out here with beautiful visual effects, stunning action, and cool world building and characters, but it's all hindered in a film that is not good. It's got terrible pacing, a story I could give one shit about. I have zero idea if the director's cut will be better. I hope it will, it usually is. But Sofia Botello and Digimon Hansu give it their all, but it is not enough. And we also do not get enough of Jimmy the Robot again in here. Like, you towed him up in all the marketing. Why the hell is he not used as much? Anyways, this should have not been the first to release. This version should have never existed. We should have just gotten what Zack Snyder wanted to put out, specifically because it's not going into theaters. Complete visual noise for the most part, and Loki reminds me of Sucker Punch. Seven Samurai meets an R-rated Star Wars is what I wanted this to be, and it is, but it's a lackluster version of it. Those are my thoughts. Rebel Moon Part 2, and I'm going to give it a D. Thank you so much again, guys, for watching this. Make sure to leave your thoughts down below. Hit that like, subscribe button, and of course, until next time, stay classy.